Hello friends and colleagues, Shifa von Neir, and I'm going to present you the presentation Holocaust Commemoration in Moldova, Sites and Politics, 1945-2020 and on. So when the Jews after 1944 began to return to Moldova, they found the land soaked with the blood of their relatives and at the same time the absence of a generally recognized place of memory. And of course, the cemeteries became the first, the most evident decision. A cemetery is, first of all, a place of memory. Secondly, the grave is almost the only public space that was under the control of the family, almost without any official intervention. And therefore, almost every Jewish cemetery in Moldova, I've been on uh, maybe all of them with the research purposes, Many tombstones, both pre-war and post-war, have additional memorial plaques with the text like in memoriam of family members who died in 1941, less often killed by the Nazis, by the fascists, or perished in the ghetto. As an example, uh, the Russian readers, the Russian speakers can read on their own. I will uh, translate for non-Russian speakers. Uh, the memorial plaque fixed at the Kishinev Jewish Cemetery. So the caption reads, in memoriam, Rappaport Moishe Leib Pinkusevich, son of Pinkus, uh, date of, the birth date doesn't matter so much. The uh, birth death uh, date is 1920. Rappaport Tsiparivka Elyevna uh, died in 1943, and Rappaport Esther Moiseevna died in 1941 at Auschwitz in Osvensum. It's written in Russian. It's obvious that Moishe Leib died in a peaceful 1920 at the age of 34 for a reason unknown to us. And his name was immortalized after the war, not at the place of his burial, but at the grave of his daughter, because apparently his grave for some reason was not preserved or was inaccessible to the family. Maybe it uh, was placed on the part of the Kishinev Jewish Cemetery that was demolished after the war in the late 50s, early 60s. Tsiparivka died on or perished in 1943. We don't know when, uh, where, maybe in evacuation, maybe in a ghetto or a camp, maybe even Soviet camp as the deportations uh, of the Jews as well, of Moldovans, Bessarabians, uh, including Jewish families, took place uh, right before, a few days before the war uh, broke down. And the third line, the place of death of Esther, leaves no room for conjecture. But in Moldova, there is a rare example of how in the first post-war years, on the initiative of the Jews, not the Jewish community, we are not talking about the Jewish community uh, since the community was not an official institution uh, at that period. So the place of mass execution and burial of Jews was immortalized. It's so-called Dubasari Babin Yar. A ghetto was created not so far from, from that place, from the site in Dubasari in August 1941, where Jews were driven not only from Dubasari and the surrounding area, but also from Kishinev, Tiraspol, Balta, Katovsk, Kananiev, Krasnoyokne, etc., etc., etc. In this place, during a few days on September from 12 to 28, 1941, the German, uh, German Einsatzkommander 12 of Einsatzgruppe D 
consisting of 20 soldiers and five officers after, under the command of uh, Hauptsturmbannführer Noski and Pilpedel Keller, Volksdeutsch, born in Russia. With the assistance of 11 local collaborators, shot from six to eight thousand people and uh, more than 18,000 bodies are lying in this place as uh, people were killed and added uh, more and more during the war. This place was on the outskirts behind a tobacco factory, but immediately after the war, new buildings began to appear around and there was a danger that something would also be built right on the bones. Then the Jews began to appeal to all infancies up to Marshal Zhukov, who had been the military commandant of Odessa from June 46 to February 48, and Odessa is not so far from Kishinev and from Dubasari. And perhaps this is a local legend, but the le even it's, uh, if it's a legend, it's a very um, typical and uh, telling itself. So it says that Zhukov personally gave the order to, to organize a memorial at the place of execution. The composition of the memorial was originally typically Soviet. The plaque on this place and are peaceful Soviet citizens who were shot by the Nazis during the Great Patriotic War in Russian and Moldovan. And a three-figure composition added in 1956 in the aesthetics of socialist realism, a Soviet soldier protecting two children, a girl and a boy. And the pedestal, there was the inscription to the Soviet soldier, the savior, but the Jews always perceived this inscription as inappropriate, who of 18,000 people lying here were, was saved by the Red Army. And after the collapse of the USSR, this inscription was removed, although the rest of the memorial elements remain. Over the years, the voices of the memorial become polyphonic. In the 1990s, the architect Simon Schoehet and the sculptor Nathan Eppelbaum developed an integral project of the memorial, which due to the eternal lack of money never was uh, implemented uh, generally. But its eternal incompleteness became symbolic uh, too. The entrance to the memorial is made out by a gate with a menorah. On the walls from the inside appear granite tablets with informational texts in Russian, Hebrew, and Yiddish at this place in September 1941. The invaders carried out a mass execution of more than 18,000 prisoners of the Dubasara ghetto, and so on. There, one by one, as the names become known, granite tablets are added with the lists of the victims. In 2017, with the money of a private sponsor, a Jew whose relatives also were killed there, opposite the figure of a soldier with the children, another monument was erected after the project by Lazar Dubinovsky, although the original project was supposed to be um, another sculpture by Nathan Nepilbaum. Stylistically, this sculpture is solved using the widespread in the post-Soviet period motive of gapping, of emptiness. A woman bowed in sorrow, and from a certain angle, one can see that the figure in the cloak is hollow. It's empty inside. On the pedestal, the words for what in Russian, English, and Yiddish. The space is complemented by six torches with eternal flame, a symbol of six million victims of the Holocaust. The whole history of perpetuating the memory of the tragedy in the monuments of Moldova continues these two tendencies. In the Soviet period, either a private initiative in a private space or a state memorial to peaceful Soviet citizens 
and in the post-Soviet period, adding of information plates about the Holocaust to Soviet monuments or raising Holocaust monuments in public space, but not on the state initiative and not for state money. On the Orhe Highway in Kishino, in the historic district of Vistarnicheng, which during the war was outside the city limits, approximately at the place uh, where mass executions took uh, place practically from the very first days of the Kishino ghetto. In the early 1980s, a monument to the victims of fascism by Aurel David was erected a symbolic image of two hands tearing the barbed wire connecting them. After the collapse of the USSR, the monument turned out to be ownerless. Not a single department was going to take care of it, and it fell into desolation. The metal from the pedestal was stolen. In 2016, the monument was restored with money from the Jewish community and private sponsors, Flags and an informational panel were added. The area around was ennobled. However, however, there were some annoying incidents. According to the original reconstruction plan, it was assumed that the alley of the riders among the nations would become part of the memorial. But while the monument itself was under reconstruction, the nearby Mercedes Center expanded, capturing the territory of the proposed alley and the situation has not yet been resolved. Around the, okay, in the post-Soviet era, the situation was, has changed somewhat, somewhat. In many cities and villages where there was a significant Jewish population before the war, large memorials or modest commemorative signs perpetually, uh, perpetuating the memory of the Holocaust, the Holocaust appear at the places of executions and mass graves. Each of them is interesting for the story behind it, for design or location. Here are just a few examples. On the outskirts of the village of Skulian Ungen region, the homeland of the Skulian Hasidic dynasty, which became famous in the United States after the war, in the middle of an empty space that can hardly be called a, a square, just a wasteland, stands a monument to the destroyed Jewish community of the town. It is interesting in that uh, wasteland is the place where the Jewish cemetery was demolished during the Soviet period. And the monument itself is stylistically designed in the form of a memorial of a matzava, of a Jewish gravestone, uh, typical for the Jewish uh, style. And the entrance to the village of Terebna, the next example, uh, Yedinet district, there is a memorial sign with the names and the Star of David on the left and a cross on the right. This is a monument to the victims of the occupation regime during the war, both Jews and Soviet activists. Uh, since 2018, more, uh, more uh, examples here. Since 2018, on the territory of Moldova, so far only in Kishino, the Stolperstein is stumbling blocks campaign has been launched, privately initiated by the German artist Günther Demick. And at the same time, I need to mention that there is still not a single monument to the victims of the Holocaust on the territory of the Republic of Moldova, erected uh, at the initiative of the state. Apparently, everything is, uh, everything is still ahead. Thank you, colleagues for your attention. You can read more. I will place the whole text of the article to my site magid.org. That's the site of the NGO I'm uh, a founding director. And uh, see you soon on the
uh, meetings uh, discussing the uh, presentations 